Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and today we are going to talk all about winter butcher paper activities. And if you're wondering what winter butcher or what butcher paper activities are, it's basically an activity students can do on the floor or at a table using giant pieces of paper where you draw the activity and they use manipulatives to do the activity. So all the activities are hands-on, they're giant. Like this is a giant snowflake activity, which I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. I think I have 10 total right here that we're, I'm gonna share with you. But um, what's great about budget paper activities, since they're big, they have to work together, right? So they're working on all of those social skills. As they work on the budget paper activity, they have to share materials. So they're practicing sharing and self-regulation. They also have to communicate with each other, which is lots of oral language. Um, whether they're gesturing, that counts too. Um, they're using language to communicate or they're um, pointing or gesturing and things like that. So they're communicating with, the, with others. Um, and whatever skill the activity is, whether it's math activity, then they would be also working on math. If it's um, fine motor, then they'll be working on lots of fine motor. If it's science or if it's um, literacy, they would be working on those skills too. And there are so many ways you can change these up to meet the needs of your students in your classroom. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through kind of how I think about them and how I plan them out. And just, I think I have 10 total activities here. I'm gonna show you guys. Um, but in the comments, I want you to tell me your favorite butcher paper activity that you do with your students or you've done so far this year, or maybe one of mine. Like I know everybody loves the turkey one in the um, around Thanksgiving where it's they draw the giant turkey and they sort by color or they sort letters or numbers, um, so that's always a favorite. The other, I forgot to tell you this part, the other great thing about these giant butcher paper activities, it also works on the big muscles. So they are working on their upper shoulders and their arms and their core because a lot of times they're having to stretch um, across the table. And this table, I'm not, I don't have to stretch very far, but I'm also big. Like their arms are half the size of mine. So they can maybe only reach to like the middle and then they would have to walk around. So they're moving, they're using all of those upper arm, all those shoulders because they have to have strong big muscles in order to have strong little muscles. So we're also working on those um, big, strong, um, big muscles too, as they're doing all of these. And if you do loose parts in your classroom, this is perfect because you can use all of your loose parts for this too. So. Let's go ahead and jump in and get excited. And I put links to all the things where the links are. There's links to my TV, T, um, my store, my blog. I have tons of ideas for you guys of all, all there. And then all the manipulatives I'm using are in my Amazon storefront, which is up in the links too. Okay, so here's the first one. So again, this is just like that giant paper you get on a roll. Now, if you don't have access to that, you can also use like large um, art easel paper, you can also, or if you don't have the space to do this, you can also use the paper that's on a roll, um, like the white paper that's on a roll, or I'm um, gonna get on Amazon. So this is a giant snowflake. So this activity would be a fun one to just have students trace the snowflake. So they're literally just gonna be tracing the snowflake with the manipulatives. Now, you can use whatever manipulatives you have. You can use mini erasers. I know a lot of us have the glass gems, so these would be great too. And what I usually do is I just usually put them out, kind of, you can't really see it, but like I would put it out around the edge so that way they have access to different ones. And maybe I would also put out these glass gems. So I'd put those in another corner. Um, but basically all the students are doing is they would just I have a lot under here, um, a lot of activities under here for you guys. So they're just gonna be making the snowflake with loose parts, whether it's mini erasers, gems. Um, you could also put out pom-poms. So they could be using pom-poms to make the snowflake. Now, as you can see, I'm sure some of you are thinking, whoa, what, what if they, they could also make patterns, right? So you could tell them like, it's okay, we're gonna, like maybe on day, I love reusing these two. So maybe on day one, they're just making the snowflake with loose parts. Maybe on day two, say, oh, I wanna see if you guys can make patterns with the manipulatives. Here, let me put it down here so you guys can see it better. So they're gonna be using their fine motor muscles to use the manipulatives to make patterns. Now, they're gonna make patterns that 
are appropriate for them. So if they are just starting with patterns, maybe they're just gonna make AB patterns. If they're if those patterns are easy for them, maybe they're gonna make A A B patterns. Maybe they're gonna make A or A B C patterns. Sorry, A B C. So light blue, white, dark blue. White. <laughs> They roll around on me. And yours wouldn't, your butcher papers won't roll, but I have like, again, a whole bunch of, um, I have like 10 stacks, 10 pieces of paper underneath here. So mine are, mine are rolling, but yours wouldn't. Um, so they can do that too. So again, you can use whatever manipulatives you have on hand in your classroom, or maybe use the manipulatives that your students love that year. So, <laughs> um, and I, I know some teachers like to use dot stickers which are these with their butcher paper activities. Now, I typically do not use dot stickers because I actually save these and I use them year after year. And I just like kind of fold them up and I um, I have a wardrobe little rack that I have these folded up and I keep them like on clip hangers. So that way I can use them over and over again. Plus, I think these get kind of expensive after a while. So these, um, I typically don't use on mine, but you totally can if you want. And the other thing is if you use stickers, it's kind of a one and done. So let's say one kid goes to town and does like half of the activity. Nobody else can do it. But as you can see, I was, I just clean these up. So if the whole thing is full and you still have five kids that want to do this activity, you can just quickly clean it off and then sort it back in. And now the activity is prepped and ready to go for the next kiddo. Um, so that's, that's another great thing too, about, um, just using manipulatives or loose parts. Okay. So that is one idea. Another idea too, is you could also, they could just dot the snowflake with the dot markers. You could just put out a bunch and you could also draw more if you wanted to, and they could just use the dot markers to trace. So that is one fun idea for you guys. Now, I wanted my students to work on letters. Now, as you can see, I actually, I have, this one you can tell I got out from my closet because, oh, it's upside down. Because you can see the fold marks. So this one, let me show you how they work. It's gigantic. So this one literally took up like, oh, whole table. But what I did was on the snowflake, you can kind of see it, I wrote letters. I have a picture. So I wrote letters on the ends of some of the snowflakes. So you can see the M's right here. There's a C and an H and an R. So this, I was covering the whole table. And then what I did was, as I just found some white manip letter manipulatives I had. So I just put out these letter tiles. And then... It looked, this is what it looked like when the students were finished with it. So basically they had to find the matching letter manipulative. Now, if you don't have white letter tiles, that's okay. You can use, these are the letter beads that you guys know I love. These are like my favorite manipulative of all time. And I just, you can just grab out the winter colors and these are great because you can do this for any theme. Um, of course I can't find, like here's an M. So they would put the M by the M. And if they would find an R, they would put the R there and the H by the H. And this whole table was covered with this giant butcher paper. As you can see, they would literally have to go over here, grab a letter, and then they would probably have to walk around the table and they would have to find that letter. They're up moving around. They are talking with each other. Maybe if they don't know a letter, they'll be like, hey friend, what, what letter is this? I don't know what this letter is. Oh, and they'll be like, the friend will be, now they're having conversations about letters. They'll be like, oh, that's a U, it makes the uh sound. Or I have a U in my name, which is the one we hear all the time, right? So this one is really fun to do. So again, you can take the butcher paper, and then take some letters and then there you go. Now they're up moving around and sorting letters. Now, if your students are past letters, put um, sight words on here. So put a sight word at the end and they could do that. You can also use sound magnets. I love these, they're from Amazon. So if you could have, or you could have both of them out and they would have to match the sound. So magnet would be 
M. And then they would be doing beginning sounds. So again, do what works for you, what your students need to do. And um, so you could either do letters or you could do beginning sounds or you could do uppercase. These are the uppercase ones I pulled. They also, here's all of them together, but they also make them in lowercase letters. So you could do lowercase letters. Now, let's say you don't have any of these manipulatives. Take the glass gems that you have at the dollar store. And what I did was I wrote letters on them. It's kind of hard to see because it's see-through. So that one's N. Oh, look, here's an M. So there's M. So I would put the M on the M. So if you don't have any manipulatives, write, just write on some um, gems from the dollar store. Then you have fun, wintry um, letter manipulatives. You can also do it with numbers. Like here's my number set. I use the bigger ones for these. Like there's 14, nine, and I just wrote on them with a Sharpie. And they are so much fun. The bigger, if you get the bigger rocks, they're easier to see than the tiny ones. So again, one activity, but you can do it so many different ways. So do it with letters or sounds. I'm just gonna be throwing them. <laughs> so, okay. The next activity I have for you, and I know some of you guys were asking me for some polar in the um, in the Facebook group, which the link's at the top if you want to join. This is my little polar bear that I drew. So I have my polar bear. Now, you could, again, you could do this game so many ways. And you guys, I am not an artist. Like, I literally use the, like, it's like kind of like a directed drawing for me because I'm, I'm not the best at... Um, drawing and writing. So this one, what you could do is, you could do a bunch of things with this one and I'll show you another um, option. Uh, what I would do is I would just put out some dice on or on the all around. And again, just get out the dice. These are foam dice. I love these because they're not really loud when they roll. That noise for some reason hurts my ears. Um, so you could do so many things with this. So they could roll the dice. Like let's say they roll two. They could get out two pom-poms, one, two, and that would make it snow. But my idea that I have for this one, and I know I reuse, I say I, I like to reuse them, but this one I think would be really fun. It would be fun to use dot markers with this one. And I think it would be, um, these are also great if you do use stickers or dot markers, hang, <clears throat> sorry, hang them up um, outside your classroom or on a bulletin board because your students are gonna remember the activity and then they'll be sharing it with their family. Like, oh, look, mom, like we or grandma or aunt, uncle or friend, whoever dropped them off or was picking them up. Oh my gosh, look, we played this game. We had to roll the dice and we had to put that many on. So what you could do is they roll the dice, two, one, two. And then they roll the dice again, three. One, two, three. And that's all. And by the time it would be done, there would be tons and tons of snow. So six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they would maybe roll five. One, two, three, four, five. So, like, can you imagine how much fun that would be for them as they're just rolling the dice and they're dotting how many? Again, we are just practicing those skills in a fun and hands-on way. And you can put out a whole bunch of different colors, too. You could put out, like... Um, I have like a purple dot marker, teal, blue, whatever colors you have on hand would be really, really fun. Or you could use, um, uh, what do you call it? You could use pom-poms too, if you wanted to like reuse the game. But this one, there's so much space, like they could play forever and ever and ever and probably never fill it up. So roll and, um, roll and dot. Oh, if you want to make this addition, I forgot to tell you. So let's say you have... So if you are teaching kindergarten and you're working on addition, roll two dice. Five plus five is 10. And then they have the dots, so they can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Or they're practicing counting on five. And I always say they cover it up. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, which is a really fun way to count on. So they're kind of covering that dice to count on. And then we would just have 10. And they would dot 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then they would do it again. So again, you can count or you can add. Totally up to you. So we got our polar bear counting. Okay, this next one is, actually this one is up on the blog. So this one, 
Hold on. You can kind of see the one underneath it. Um, so this one is just, it's little. So they don't always have to be huge. This one's little, and I actually tore the paper bad. So I cut it curvy at the top and the bottom. So that way no one would know that um, I'm, I messed it up. So all I did was in the middle of each snowman, I drew a shape. And then what I would do is I have, I'm sure a lot of us love um, all of these shape buttons. So you would put out your shape button. Now I have flour for a shape button. So if you wanna add all this, you wanna make a snowman with all the shapes, that works too. Um, or you wanna just put out the basic shapes, then just put those buttons out. I'm trying to cover up the next one so it's not distracting. Um, so like we have a circle, we'll go in the circle. And then since I'm apparently finding all the circles, so they have circle and you guys, it's so, why can't I find any? I'm finding all the circles. So we have circle, circle, square. So they're just sorting. Now, if you don't have shape beads, use whatever shape manipulative you have. Maybe you have the, um, the ones you use on the light table. Those work too. Um, if you don't want to do shapes, what could you put in the middle? You could put letters in the middle of these snowmen. You could put numbers. You could also just make it color. So if you have little learners that are little, like maybe you have two, maybe they are just going to sort by color. So we're going to put all the red ones in there and then all the green ones in that one and then the blue ones in there. I'd probably color the whole um, snowman. Like I would color all of this red if you're going to sort by, by color. Um, but again, do the activity that your students need to work on. Don't do something that's easy that they already already have down and they don't need any more practice. Um, so if they, if they need practice with 2D shapes, do 2D shapes. If they need practice with colors, color them in and practice colors. Um, you could also put, again, sight words in the middle or, and they would have to spell out the sight words with letter manipulatives. You could put a letter in each, snowman's belly and they would have to match the letters again options are endless so as you can see we have icebergs for this one now maybe you are studying polar animals but maybe you don't want to draw the animals so what you can do is go to your block center and grab some animals from your block center. And so now we have the little penguins. Now, they have nothing to do with the activity other than they are there just for fun and to get students excited and get them extra engaged in the activity. So, put out some letter manipulatives. Again, you could use um, the, the letter beads that are my favorite. I love those. Again, you could use just regular old You could just use regular magnet letters. That works too. They don't always have to be winter colors. Throw these out. Your students will not care. They will just be engaged in having a blast, getting up and moving. And they can even like, you can even give each one a penguin and say, okay, I have the penguin pick one. And they can pick one out. And then they have to match it. Um, they can have the penguins on there. Do whatever you want. Do whatever your students, you you know your students. Do it, do it to where they will love it. Um, now let's say you don't want to do penguins. That's fine. Maybe you want to be put out a whole bunch of different polar animals. So we got like a seal and a walrus and we got a big old penguin and oh, I can't reach. Maybe we got some polar bears. So you can just put these all over. I'm just putting them right here so you guys can kind of see them. And now they're there just for extra added fun. Maybe you got the little penguin babies on here too. Like how, like how engaging is this? I love doing these too for table time. So your students walk in and they automatically know, oh, we're sorting letters. Okay, they're gonna come right in and they are gonna get started and they are gonna sort all the letters. And again, I usually put these, you can't see it, but I would put them on each end. I usually put each end or each corner. Um, so that way again, they have to walk around and they have to stretch and reach or they have to say, pass me a letter. It encourages them to communicate with their friends. Um, so again, super, super fun and engaging. Now, let's say you do this day one. So we're matching letters. Now the next day they come out, put 
my penguins back. Put out a bucket of letters or crayons or whatever you want to do. Or maybe you want to do pencils and have them go around and write the letters on each one. Okay? So now, are, are, if you have 18 kids, are all 18 P's going to fit? Probably not. But you know what? They can write on top of them, each other. They can write it kind of around. Your students will not care. All that matters is that they are having fun and practicing. Now, if they are walking around, are they going to have to stretch a little bit to do the O? Or maybe they're going to have to stretch a little bit to do the E? Probably. But that's, again, really good for their core and their upper arms and their shoulders. They're make, getting that still shoulder stability. Um, all the big muscles, again, they need to write all the little muscles. Um, and then this is 10 times more engaging and 10 times more fun than any handwriting worksheet you will ever do or ever give them. If you are having behaviors because it's winter and we can't go outside as much, whether you're having snow or rain or it's just freezing outside and you can't go outside, do, instead of doing a handwriting worksheet, put up, make three of these, make four of these and have all your students do them around the room. And maybe this one has the penguins and that one has something else on it. Um, or different activities going at the same time. But again, super fun handwriting. And they can just go around and write it. And then hang it up, you put it on the wall, put it as a bulletin board, because it's something they did. It's a collaborative project. And it looks great on the bulletin board. Because again, your students did it. They did all the hard work. And it'll look really cool. I, um, I'm just using, I just picked a pencil up. But you can totally do markers. You can put crayons out, whatever you want to do. And if it would be really fun to do markers or crayons because then they would be all different colors. So fun. So, two ways to do that. They can sort, and again, they could also do the letters, the beginning sound magnets too, if you wanted to work on beginning sound. So, I know a lot of us do a hibernation theme in the winter. So, again, I'm not the best at drawing, but I made a whole bunch of caves. And as you can see, this is that brown like craft, like almost like wrapping paper. I got some, usually you can find some on sale sometimes too after the holidays. So we have some bears, got our bears here, right? So this one, this time they are counting. So what manipulatives could you put out? I know a lot of you guys love dominoes because these are great because they have to count. This also is great because it's different um, numbers that are combined, so they're also adding. So three plus four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have to put it in the seven cave. Two plus, um, three plus two is five, or they can just count. Maybe they're in pre-K or pre preschool. One, two, three, four, five. Five, I, that one has five. Now, if your students can't recognize these numbers inside of that little cave, put that many dots so that way they can check how many. So again, you can use dominoes. Now you could put out a whole bunch of different manipulatives. You could also put out gems. So this one is two. They could put that one in the two. This one is six. So they would put that one in the six. Here's five. Mm -hmm. so they'd put it in the five. So again, put these in buckets on the corners and then they have what? They have a choice. They have a choice of what manipulative to use. So when they have choice, they get even more excited because then they they get to take charge a little bit of the activity for themselves. And again, you could use these. Another fun thing to do. Where did I put them? <laughs> okay, is to also use any like stackable counters. I was looking for my cubes, but um. These are stackable button counters. So they could also use these. And again, you could use the winter color. So one, two, three, four, five. So now they have a set of five and they can put that in there too. Now, can the next, oh, can't really see it. So can the next friend come up? Count out five more, yep, they can. And they can make their own number tower. Again, giving them choice to use dominoes, the counters, whatever they wanna do, totally up to them. But again, there's a whole bunch of space they can use to do a whole bunch of different number twos, 
number fives. And again, this is also great too to show that rum numbers can be represented in a various um, in various ways. They can be a stack, it can be a numeral, it can be two sets of numbers together. So this is great for a hibernation theme. Now again, I just put the bears out there just for a little bit more fun. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But again, there, I already have them out because we're doing hibernation. They're already in the block center. I'm just gonna go grab them from the block center and put them out. All right, so this one, how cute is my hedgehog? So I would probably like color him in, maybe if, or you could have a student color him in too. Um, but this one, for my little animals in winter theme, I have a whole bunch of snowballs all around. You see it? Okay. So I left them blank because there's a couple, there's so many different things you could do. You could put addition problems in there. You could put sight words in there. You could put letters in there. You could put numbers in there. Tons and tons and tons and tons of different things you could do. Or if you have toddlers, they can literally just fill it in with pom-poms or whatever you have. So I wanted, I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to think, okay, what skill do my students need to work on? What are we struggling with? What do we need to practice? And then make a butcher paper activity to go with it. So again, you could put anything in there. Let's do, um, let's do, let's do letters. Why not, right? So, oh, and then I forgot to tell you. So you can use how I make these are, I love to use the Mr. Sketch markers. Those are my favorite. I also, the black is actually this, it's called Indi India Ink. And I just buy the, the daubers and put them in the daubers. And then it's permanent though, so be careful. So like maybe you'd wanna put letters in it. Okay, so now you can have a whole bunch of letters in there. And again, you can sort with letter tiles. They can sort with the little letter manipulatives, whatever you wanna do, but a ton and ton of fun. Or, where are they at? You can also sort with the little letter, letter beads that you make. Again, whatever you wanna do, we're gonna pretend that one's a B, even though it doesn't say B, <laughs> just for time's sake. So you can put anything in them you want. So, so much. you could also do shapes and they could sort the shape buttons by shape. Now, let's say you have a ton of like print, printable math and literacy centers. Like in my winter math and literacy centers, I have a whole, these letter snowballs are in there. So you can also put out printable things with it. So that way they can put the snowballs and they can match them and just put them out in little trays. I love these snowballs. Can you tell how many we have? I, I, we use them for a lot, <laughs> a lot of different activities. Um, but they can do uppercase. Again, you can do lowercase. They can match them on top, um, whatever you guys um, want to do. Now, we all read the mitten, right? I think everybody reads that every year. It's just such a fun activity. So I drew a whole bunch of different sized mittens on this butcher paper. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna fill them up to see how many things fit in each mitten, just like in the book. So, you can use ice cubes. I just bought these from Amazon. They are so fun. They come in um, clear and like yellows too, but we're just gonna do it for time's sake. <laughs> we're just gonna fill it up. And now, are your students gonna be able to count as high to fill this big mitten up? Probably not. If you are teaching three-year-olds, they probably do not have one-to-one -one correspondence to like what, probably 30, 40 that takes to fill it up. And you know what? That's okay. What skills are we working on if they're not counting at the end? We are working on spatial reasoning because they're trying to fill it up. So it's kind of like a puzzle, right? They're seeing how many fit. If this one's hanging off, that one doesn't fit, right? So it's really great for spatial reasoning. So you could put out also a couple different things. Like this one only fits, this one is small, so it only fits one, two, three, four. So they, they would probably have one-on-one -one correspondence so four, so that encourage that counting to four. But this one, 
a pre-K three-year-old probably would not be able to count out, but that's okay. You can just say which one has, you can do more or less in that situation. So which mitten fits more? Is it the big mitten or the little mitten? You can be like, oh, the, the big mitten fits more, the little mitten has less. So again, even though they can't count that high, that's okay. They can, you can talk about use more or less. Just use the math vocabulary that works for at your student's level. Now, if you teach older kiddos like kinder, they um, might be able to, um, depends on what time of the year and the um, just your class and the kiddos in it, they may or may not be able to have one-to-one -one correspondence to that, but you can always encourage them to do so. I'm gonna fill up this one because it's a little bit smaller. And you can also put out different things. So put out mini erasers. Maybe they can compare. Um, does it fit more mini erasers or more ice cubes? And then you would talk about why. Well, this one maybe fits more mini erasers because the mini erasers are smaller than the ice cubes and they're round. So they also fit better or easier in there. And then you can count and see how many fit. Again, we are just exploring size and capacity more and less. And then if they do have that one-to-one -one correspondence, then encourage them to count, especially for those smaller mittens. So put out a whole bunch of different things. And again, use whatever you have in your classroom, whether you use these um, reusable ice cubes or you can use mini erasers, you can use cubes, you can use Legos, literally use whatever you have in your classroom. Because the whole point of butcher paper activities is that you don't have to go out and buy more theme things to fit the theme. So draw the mittens and then use counting cubes or use Legos or use um, maybe counting chips, you know, those color chips. Use whatever you have in your classroom, it's totally fine. You could also put out a whole bunch of different animals. So I have all of my animals, right? So you can say which animals or how many animals can we get to fit in the mitten? In the mitten, like this one fits both. Of, this one fits the two penguins. Let's see how many I can, animals I can get to fit in this, in this one. So again, we are just working on spatial reasoning. They're having to kind of put together a puzzle. Like, and how engaging is this? How many, and now when you use bigger animals, your students hopefully or may almost have one-to-one -one correspondence. So that they'll be able to count how many animals. They'll be able to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I fit seven animals in my in the green mitten. Um, and again, super engaging. And look, you can just put all the animals back out. I would probably put them in a tray on the side, um, but I can only show you so much on the on the video. Um, but then they can scoot them over. They can leave one out. And then the next friend or a couple, again, a couple friends can work on this at the same time, again, with that collaborative play. And just because students aren't talking doesn't mean they're not also listening to their friends. Um, maybe they're at a time where they're just listening a lot because they always listen before they are able to verbalize their thinking, right? So maybe they're just taking it all in. They're just looking and observing what other friends are doing because students also learn that way, right? They learn by watching and observing others. They learn from you by observing you. We model things for them. So as your the other peer is doing this activity, they're going to be watching them, especially if they're younger um, or they don't have the skill, whatever the activity is yet, they're going to be watching their peers. So again, this is great for peer modeling. They're going to learn from each other too. So, so much fun. So this one, okay, you guys, I am not, again, not, not the best artist, but my students would be, no one cares. They just love that you made a really fun and engaging activity for them. So this one is mittens. Again, we're just going with mittens because it's winter. So this one is a pattern activity. So they are gonna use, which of course I forget to bring my colored pom-poms over here, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna use what we have. So they are going to make patterns with the mittens. And I started them with the dots and then they're gonna keep them going. Now, you could give them dot stickers and they could keep going, but if you wanted your students to be able to do, like have more than one student do it, Use whatever you have in your classroom. I typically use pom-poms for this, but again, I forgot to bring them over here with me. I only have the winter colored ones. So they're just gonna extend that pattern. So this one is purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue. 
And one thing that's also great that when you start the pattern is that you can put out more difficult patterns. So maybe they're not able, maybe you're, a lot of your friends are just working on AB patterns or AABB. Maybe you could sneak in there some ABB pattern or maybe that next pattern that's a little bit harder. Um, you can put that one out for them to work on. Um, but again, you can use whatever you have in your classroom to extend these patterns. It doesn't always have to be the same thing over and over. You can use, again, use what you have. And use the manipulatives that your students love. If they love buttons, the shape buttons, use those. If they love Legos, use, have them make patterns with the Legos. They can use whatever, whatever they want. Again. And then they can clean it off and you, for the next friend or next group of friends to do it. Um, you can also, again, just fold this up and keep it for the next time. Okay, I have three more. So, this one's blank, right? Because I wanted to make one with you. I did this last time and everybody said they loved it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a whole bunch of letters. Whole bunch of letters all over. Okay, we're gonna pretend like this whole thing is covered, okay? Now, in the winter, what cleans up the, the snow? The snow plows do, right? Well, I don't have any snow plow figures, but I do have some dump trucks. These are all those like little Tonka caterpillar ones or whatever. This one has a little digger on the back. It's fine. You can use it. It's totally fine. Okay, so now. And this is great because this ink dries pretty quick, which is also awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to cover this with snow. Is it snow? No, it's cotton balls. <laughs> so you are gonna cover your paper with cotton balls. Now, if I was doing this with my class, oh look, this one has little snowflakes on it. I must have used this for another winter activity. Um, you can also put little snowflakes in it too. That works too. But I would, if I was doing this with my classroom, I would probably spread the letters out a little bit more, but I'm for size sake and the video is small. I want to show you how um, you can do it. So what you're going to do is they're going to put out a whole bunch of diggers and then they are going to, or snow plows, and they are going to plow the snow and they're going to say, I found the letter L and then they'll, they'll, um, they can push it back or they can leave it, leave it shown. And then, cause look what happens. As they move the snow to find the next letter, look what happens. It covers them back up. So now I found a J. And you can talk about the sounds or beginning um, other, um, what the sound is. I found a G and then they can find the other letters. But look, as they are moving, see how it covers them back up? And don't tell me your goods are not gonna love Doing snowplow letters, I found a D, D, I found a K, K, or, oh, Catherine, your name starts with that letter. Um, So, totally try this. Your kids will go bonkers for this. Again, do letters, do numbers, do sight words, do CVC words, do addition problems, do subtraction problems. Put whatever you want hidden under the snow. And you can do different things each day. If they love it, do it again. Do it tomorrow and say, I hid something different under the letters today. And see what see what you can find. And do, do numbers the next day. You can also do dots if you want them to work on counting. Here, I'll do one back here. So you could do like three dots. And so when they would move the snow, they would find three dots. So if you wanna work on one-to-one -one correspondence, you can just have them find the dots too. Do, again, make the activity work for the students you have and, um, and the skills that they need to work on. So that's another one. Then other, again, I have a couple more for us. So everyone goes ice skating in the winter, right? So do a whole bunch of different line, types of lines. Maybe do a zigzag line, do a spiral. Do some crazy ones that don't make sense. Just cover it in a whole bunch of different ones. Now, 
what I want you to do is put out some markers or some crayons. Markers or crayons. And I want the student to trace it. Because when the students are tracing, one, they're having to do what? They're practicing those different types of lines, right? They're developing hand-eye coordination. They're working on pencil grasp. Now, is it gonna be covered? Because every student's not gonna do it perfect. It's gonna be covered by the end, but you know what? All that matters is they're practicing and they're developing those pre-writing skills. And again, hang this on the bulletin board when you're done. If you don't have space, hang this on the wall. Like this. At students level and have them trace it on the wall. I would do this all the time when I taught full day because when we would go in the hallway and we had a big long wall that didn't have bulletin boards on it, kind of around the corner from my room. I would literally hang up tons of huge pieces of paper and put different types of lines. They would have to start at the top and go down or trace them. And they're using these upper upper, upper arm muscles. So they're, they're developing those strong shoulder muscles, but they're also holding the pencil at the same time, developing that pencil graphs. So use a vertical surface, use a flat surface, whatever you need. So go ice skating. Or if your kids love hockey, you, they can have a hockey game on their ice skating. All right, so the last one I have for you guys so this one is art. I put it up here because it was wet. Because I did this right before we, I went live. So what you're going to do is you're going to put out a giant piece of paper. And then you're going to put out little plates with cookie cutters. And they just are going to stamp. Push the paint around and stamp. And they can stamp, stamp, stamp. You can also put out glitter. I like putting my glitter in plastic salt shakers. These are from the dollar store. They can sprinkle it on. They can stamp. And look what I'm doing. I'm pushing it in. So I'm using this forearm and upper arm muscle. And as I push it down, I'm pushing down with my fingers. So I'm, again, strengthening the, that um, those pencil grass muscles, the pincer muscles. And you guys, they are gonna love this. Again, it makes a gorgeous um, artwork for the bulletin board. Now, one thing I didn't put on here is, you can also, it's gonna kind of use the edge here, put out a giant piece of white paper, get some white paint out, where are they? And they can make snowflakes with Q-tips. So look, they're working on that pincer graphs and they're just gonna cover the paper in snowflakes. Can they do dots? They can do dots. Can they dot on their snowflake? Absolutely. Can they make fancy ones? Absolutely. Can they make ones that don't really look like a snowflake? 100%. They can just make whatever little snowflake their heart desires. So again, Q-tip, little plate of paint. Super, super simple, giant piece of paper. I hope you guys loved all of these butcher paper activities. Um, we'll get a blog post going together, but if not, you guys have all the ideas here. I hope you guys loved all these butcher paper activities. If you want, um, if you are doing these in your classroom, please tag me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Um, I would love to see it in action. And if you post in the Packet or Preschool Facebook group, I always see it because it's in there. Um, so I hope you guys have an awesome night and have fun prepping these butcher paper activities with your little learners because learning through play is just the best. You guys have an awesome night or day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.